morning, church. I was uh, driving down 127, the main highway, uh, this one day this week uh, in Crossville, and I've done this many times. It had been a long day. I'd had a lot going on, pretty stressful week, uh, did a funeral, did all kinds of stuff. And maybe you guys that are from here and have grown up here can explain this to me, but for some reason, every time I go down 127, where the speed limit is 45 miles per hour, I get behind two people side by side that have decided they're going to go about 25 miles per hour only when I'm in a rush. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Say amen. Amen. I don't know what it is. You can blame the Fairfield people. You can blame the rednecks from here people. I don't know what it is, but I about lost my stuff. And don't you judge me because you do the same thing. Your preacher is sitting behind his wheel, and he's thinking to himself, I don't know, my kids probably asked my wife, why are there only idiots driving when daddy's driving? You know what I'm saying? Because I struggle. I got angry. I got angry. I was... uh talking to a, a business owner in town and uh, just counseling him through some stuff. And he was like, man, I'm so frustrated with this one client. He keeps telling me that the check is in the mail. I'm calling, I'm emailing, I'm sending him a text. I even went by his place of business and he's avoiding me like crazy. And I'm so frustrated. I'm actually considering getting a lawyer in order to handle this because this guy has made me so, so angry. Everybody say angry. Angry. Angry made me angry. Uh, I don't know if you've ever done this before, but you know, I'm a preacher, so I'm an easy target. Uh, have you ever jumped on Facebook and somebody is attacking your character or somebody is passively aggressively saying something to you without saying something to you? Somebody tells you about a thread on topics and you go online and look at it and you see that people are attacking you from all sides and something wells up inside of you and that thing is what, church? It's anger, right? It's anger. Maybe you've, and these are some examples that I've dealt with, maybe you came home from work one day to find that your next door neighbor has built a six-foot privacy fence. And upon further investigation, you find out that this fence is about two feet over onto your property line. That would make you what, church? Angry. Angry. Hey, it's Christmas time. In the next couple of weeks, guess what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to sit down with a bunch of people you can't stand. Let's be real. Hey, man, it's the, you, you never see them, and there's a very specific reason for that, right? But you're being guilted into and manipulated by your parents or by someone to get together one last time because it may be so-and-so's last Christmas or, or whatever. We got to see the new baby or whatever it is, and you're going to be sitting there, really, and you're going to have all these issues come up from when you were a kid, and you're going to have to deal with the attitudes, and you're going to have to deal with messed up people that, that you stay away from for a reason, and if you're not careful, you're going to let what get out of control? You're what, church? anger. We're starting a new series today called Goodwill Towards Men, nestled right in the middle of the Christmas story in Luke chapter 2 verse 14 is a verse of scripture that we're basing the next three weeks off of that says this, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. I hope what we understand over the next three weeks during this series is that peace and you wanting goodwill towards men are directly connected. If we want peace on this earth, everyone's got to understand we've got to get outside of ourselves and want good for others. If you want peace in your life, and I don't want anybody that would say, no, I don't want peace, I want drama, I want craziness, I want madness and confusion in my life. If you want peace, you're going to have to get outside of yourself And you are going to have to understand that you're going to need to have an attitude of good will towards men. One of the attributes that you are going to have to get under control if you're going to have good will towards men is anger. Back when I was in high school in the mid and late 90s, there was a band that I listened to called Rage Against the Machine. Anybody know who I'm talking about? Rage Against the Machine. And they had a song that was probably their most popular song called Bulls on Parade. 
So the sermon I'm going to preach to you today is a sermon titled Bulls on Parade because that describes some of us that are sitting under the sound of my voice as it pertains to your anger. Let's start off with a question though of why do we struggle with anger? How many people in here struggle with anger? Raise your hand. Okay, if anybody's next to you and they don't have your hand raised, call them a liar. Go ahead. Just be like, you're a liar, bro. Liar, and the truth ain't in you, I'm telling you. Thomas Fuller once said this, two things a man should never be angry at, what he can help and what he cannot help. I want you to understand this, that anger that wells up inside of you is a result of being created in the image of God. God is not angry, but God does get angry. Angry and anger is something that is totally normal for every single one of us to experience. There's not necessarily anything wrong with it, and in itself, it is not sinful. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, the A part of this verse, we're going to go back to this passage in a minute, it says, In your anger, do not sin. The implication is, is that every single one of us are going to experience anger, but it's what we do with it that makes it sinful or not sinful. Anger is defined as a reaction to something that you feel is wrong and you wanting to seek justice for that wrong. And I believe biblically that it can be a very productive and a good emotion until it controls us and it's out of control. Anger can cost you your job. Anger can cost you your marriage. Anger can cost you your friends. I've visited the jail a few times in the last few weeks, and let me tell you something. Anger can even cost you your very freedom if you don't get it under control. I believe that there are two types of anger that every single one of us struggle with, and I think we'll back this up biblically and in other ways. I believe there's what's called righteous anger or sinful anger, or it could be defined as sanctified anger or unfounded anger. Dr. Gary Chapman, the one who wrote the book, The Five Love Languages, wrote a book on anger. It's really, really good. You need to read it if you want to dig further into this. He says that there is valid and unvalid anger. Valid anger is an anger that is what we call a righteous indignation. Things that would make God himself angry. Things that Jesus would get upset about. Because remember, Jesus flipped over temple tables. He screamed at religious hypocrites and did all kinds of things like that. But that kind of anger is like when you read on the news or hear on the news or read in the paper that a kid was hurt by someone. A child was molested, a child was beaten, something like that happens. There should be something that wells up inside you and makes you angry. When you see hypocrisy in the church and you see people being total hypocrites and denying people that that are the very people Jesus died for, uh, denying them to be involved in the church, that should make you angry angry there's something wrong if it doesn't if you see starving children over in Africa there should be something that ignites inside of you and you want to see justice any kind of injustice that takes place that God would get angry about you should get angry and if you don't there's something really really wrong but the invalid anger the unrighteous anger the sinful anger that makes us act out is when the car cuts you off on the freeway and you lose your mind Invalid anger is when a teenager, out of their stupidity, says something like, I hate you, mom and dad, and I know you hate me too, even though all they've ever done is sacrifice everything for you. Parents, y'all know what I'm talking about? Say amen. Yeah, that's invalid. That, let's just call it what it is. You're acting like an idiot, okay? Like, invalid anger is, uh, I mean, this isn't from my life, but you come home for the 571st time in a row and he's left the dirty dishes on the counter again. And you freak, and because of that, anybody know what I'm talking about? Because of that, because of this distorted anger you get, you feel disrespected and you act on it. And before you know it, a marriage is ended as a result. Uh, Neurophysiologist uh, Narina Ramleka, uh, she did some research on anger and really she just backed up what the Bible already tells us. Before they even uh, had psychology, the Bible called every single bit of what they're finding in humans. 
to be true. She says everyone gets angry, and she categorizes people into two categories as it pertains to anger. There are people who, what she says, hold rage in, or those who express rage out. I like to categorize them by there are imploders and there are exploders. One preacher said there are spewers and there are skew, uh, uh, stewers, stewers, spewers. And some of you guys with your anger, you're like a mento dropped into a Diet Coke. Y'all know what I'm saying? You explode right out the gate. Anybody sitting next to somebody like that? Like, you're like, I don't want to raise my hand. They may freak out right now. You know what I mean? But physically, you can see it. Verbally, you can see it. It's interesting to note that when you let your anger get control of you, your body goes through physiological changes. It actually goes into something similar to the fight or flight mode. That's why you hear people say, I got so angry, I blacked out, I couldn't even remember. Your blood pressure shoots up. Your memory goes blank. You can't, your, your face turns red. Literally, I believe at Revolution Church this weekend, there are going to be people here that are going to die early if you do not get control of your anger. Spewers that just lose it over anything. I like what Charles Spurgeon said, he said, do not say, I cannot help having a bad temper. Friend, you must help it. Pray to God to help you overcome it at once, for either you must kill it or it will kill you. You cannot carry a bad temper into heaven. Let me say that one more time. You cannot carry a bad temper into heaven. Spewers can't do it. Stewers in here, I keep wanting to say skewers. I got an outback on my mind for some reason. Shrimp on the Barbie, I don't know. Stewers, you may be even a little more dangerous because you're the ones, you don't want to talk about it. You get quiet, men. Anybody sitting next to a stewer right now? Raise your hand. You withdraw from everything. You're angry, but you want to think through it. You think you've got it under control, but really what we're going to find in a minute is it's just getting worse and worse and worse. I want to give you just a couple of different ways that you can deal biblically with your anger. Uh, as we go into the holidays and as this is a time of year where <laughs> suicide rates double and triple you talk to any law enforcement officer, they will say, we get more calls over the holidays than ever. You know why? Because families get together. People are more stressed than ever. You guys are trying to find money that isn't there to buy presents you don't need. You're trying to please everybody and run around to every single household there is. And if we don't watch it, our peace will not happen in our lives if we don't wish goodwill towards men and get our anger under control. It will literally be bulls on parade. Merry Christmas, family. Bulls on parade. Here's your Christmas gift. Y'all ready? Say, yeah, buddy. Let's do this. Number one, this, this isn't rocket science. Uh, uh, spewers, you need to listen to this one. People that freak out, mento people, uh, that's our hashtag for the weekend, hashtag mentos. Uh, you need to listen to this one. Be slow to anger. Look at your neighbor and say, be slow to anger. Be slow to anger. You know that old saying, count to 10 when you get angry? Some of you guys need to go for a walk and count to about a million. Y'all know what I'm saying? And you got to chill a little bit and understand the Bible instructs us to be slow to anger. There are two options when you get angry. And 99% of the time, you need to take the first option. You can either let it go, go frozen style, right? Or you can confront the issue that you're angry about. In Galatians chapter 5, it tells us what the fruit of the Spirit is. Listen to it. It says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. And everybody, say this next word with me. One, two, three. Forbearance. Let's do that one more time. One, two, three. Forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Forbearance means to have patience and self-control for other people. It literally means, if you look up the Bible dictionary, it means to make an allowance for each other's faults. And the scripture is clear. There's no law against how much allowance you give for people. There's no law for how many times you let something go. 
book of Proverbs backs this up. Proverbs 19.11, listen to what it says. Good sense makes one slow to anger, and it is his glory to punch somebody in the face. That's what you want it to say, isn't it? It is his glory to be passive-aggressive. It is his glory to overlook an offense. Proverbs 14, 17. A man of quick temper acts foolishly, and a man of evil devices is hated. I had a preacher tell me once that after he got done preaching a sermon on anger, a lady was not happy about it. She came up to him and she said, My anger does not hurt anyone because when I blow up, it is all over. And the preacher looked at her and says, so does a shotgun, and look at the damage it leaves behind. Some of us think we're not hurting anybody, but literally when you explode out of anger and you're not slow to anger, it's a shotgun. Shotgun spread. They can hit any target, innocent targets. You've got to understand you've got to be slow to anger. There is a point when your anger needs to be confronted, though. Jesus tells us this, Luke chapter 17. Pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. Okay, let's make this clear. Rebuke him. You don't get on Facebook and post a scripture that's about them. Oh, man, I'm getting all up in everybody's tater patch again. It's been a while, hasn't it, y'all? Are y'all good? Say amen. Amen. I mean, I know y'all don't do this passive-aggressive stuff. It's the other service that does this. The the people watching online need to hear this, right? Like, come on, man. Rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. What did Jesus mean? Don't fight fire with fire. You just get a bigger fire. Anybody seen the fires in California right now? They're out of control. That's what you do when you fight anger with anger, when you fight sin with anger. Two wrongs do not make a right. Listen to me. Don't do the wrong thing because someone did the wrong thing to you. Let me say that one more time and y'all give a big amen. That's one of them one-liners I worked hard. Sticky point, okay? Don't do the wrong thing because someone did the wrong thing to you. Amen? Amen. Billy Graham was quoted as saying, hot heads and cold hearts never solved anything. Jesus taught us that we fight those things with the opposite. What did Jesus say? You don't fight anger with anger. You don't fight hate with anger. You don't fight hate with hate. Man, he said crazy stuff like, love your enemies. Pray for those that persecute you. Hey, brothers and sisters in Christ, you're going to have disagreements in your family and among each other in the church. And guess what? Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Love each other. Don't justify sinful behavior. Be slow to anger. Number two, I'll tell you this. Handle your anger quickly. Stewards, listen up. Listen up. Y'all still there? Say, I am. Top it in online if you're watching. Hey, people that hold it in, people that say, man, I want you to listen to this because yours may be the most dangerous. Yours may be the most dangerous. There's a reason why serial killers and, and mass murderers and people like that, they always say they were quiet. We didn't even know they had an anger issue. Listen, handle your anger quickly. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. Listen to what it says and how powerful this is. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Why? Here's why. Do not give the devil a foothold. You go to bed day after day, month after month, year after year, allowing the sun to set on your anger, not dealing or confronting the issue or giving it to God and letting it go, you are building up an account of hate and an account of anger. Every day you do that, it is a drop in the bucket that gets heavier and heavier for you to carry. And not only that, you are allowing Satan, our enemy, the devil, to counsel you and you don't even know it. And what Satan is trying to convince you is that if you do the wrong behavior, it could bring the right results. And don't even worry with doing the right thing because that won't work for you. I can't tell you how many times I've sat with married couples before. And I've sat and I've given them biblical advice and I've said, hey, you need to do this, this, and this. And they look at me almost every single time because here's the thing about marriage counseling. Most of the time people come to us, uh, not when it's too late, but when they've already got the divorce papers filed. Y'all know what I'm saying? If you're having problems, get on it quick. 
But I can't tell you how many times they look at me and they say, that won't work. I, 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 can't, I can't serve her and love her and go the extra mile for her. I've tried it already. It won't work. That's days and months and years of anger that have built up. The devil has counseled them and made them believe, if you do the right thing, don't even bother, it won't work. And in turn, what they do is they try to manipulate. Most of the time in marriage counseling, I've recognized this. People are trying to manipulate me to get their spouse that's messed up because they've done everything right. Preacher, I need you to convince them. Anybody know what I'm talking? Again, not you guys, okay? It's the people watching online. Are y'all with me? Say amen. amen. No. You better handle your anger quickly. World War II. Uh, there were all kinds of bombings that took place in Germany and in Europe. And to this day, they still find bombs that didn't detonate when they dropped them. This is a picture of a bomb that we're going to put on the screen right now uh, that they found uh, around uh, five years ago or so. That's a, that's a warhead that was dropped out of a plane during World War II. And they've written articles extensively on this about to this day, they will still unearth bombs from World War II. To this day, bombs are still blowing up and killing people in Europe and all over Germany. In fact, one article said this. It said, the bombs of World War II are still killing people in Europe. They turn up and sometimes blow up 50 years after the guns fell silent. They talk in this article about how these bombs that are buried underground become unstable as they corrode. And sometimes... Just the slightest hit or the slightest touch when a bulldozer hits them, they will blow up and cause all kinds of destruction. Hear me, hear me, hear me. That's what happens when you don't handle your anger quickly. Underneath the surface inside you, you got bombs that are buried. And they're going to go off. They're going to blow up. They're going to hurt you, and they're going to hurt the people around you. Are y'all with me? Say amen. amen. Handle your anger quickly. Sitting on your anger causes you to have a distorted view of people. He left his dishes out. He doesn't respect me at all. No, the reality is he just had a mama that never taught him how to clean up his dishes. He's not trying to disrespect you at all, but you get distorted in your mind. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Say amen. You know, you, you get paranoid. You go through a wild thought process and you start to assume things. And you know what assuming does. Do I need to say it? No. Okay. You start to get paranoid about people. And honestly, when you hold your anger in, you are a miserable, miserable person. Listen to me. Today's anger is manageable, but yesterday's is not. Today's anger is manageable. Yesterday's anger is very, very dangerous because anger turns into bitterness and bitterness can be poison to your soul. Anybody with me say amen? amen. You got to handle it quickly. Last thing I'll tell you is this. Are y'all good? Say amen. Because I may get done quick. I don't want to say that too early. Don't call me a liar if not. Your closeness to God determines your response to anger. Let me, let me say that again because this is so important. I've identified who you are. I've identified how you deal with it. I've identified how wrong it is the way you're dealing with it. But really, listen to me. Your closeness to God determines your response to anger. Ephesians chapter 4, let's go back to it. At the end of that passage of Scripture, listen to this. Paul instructs the church of Ephesus to do this. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. I just want to point out the order. 
bitterness, rage, anger leads to (laughs) brawling and slander and malice. Bitterness, rage, anger leads to you, essentially, this is what it means. If you don't get control of your anger and let God handle it and handle it the way the Bible says, it leads to you trying to hurt other people. And in the process, hurting yourself. Listen, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, and we're going to do a whole week on forgiveness. It's going to be awesome. Just as Christ in God forgave you. I heard a story uh, about, then we're going to get the lights and whoever's going to come play can come play. But I heard a story about a, a couple that had been married about 50 years, senior couple. And uh, the man had a horrible temper the whole time they were married. He was just a horrible, horrible guy. He was a, he was a spewer, you know what I mean? He just freaked out on his wife all the time and was always upset. And uh, at the end of his life, he, he kind of starts to realize his shortcomings. He always knew them, but he starts to admit them. And he goes to his wife one day and he says, Honey, I'm so sorry that I let out my anger against you so often. How in the world did you manage to stay married to me for 50 years? How in the world did you manage to stay so calm? She looked at him and said, Well, every time you got angry with me, I would, I would always go and clean the toilet. That's the first thing I'd do. And he looks at her and he's, what? Perplexed. What? How did that help you? She looked at him and said, well, I always used your toothbrush to do it. (laughs) Don't get any ideas. I'm not giving you a way to handle your anger. (laughs) Listen. (laughs) Two statements. It's amazing how godly you can be in any situation when you are close to God, isn't it? It's amazing how when you're close to God, you can forgive people, you can love people, you can hold your anger in, you can give thanks to God that people look at. And the Bible says in Philippians, they look at you and go, how in the world are they dealing with this? You can deal with tragedy, you can deal with so many things. But it is amazing how carnal you and I can be in any situation when we're far from God. Hey, we won't put it past us to clean a toilet with a toothbrush, even when you've been married 50 years. It's amazing how you can let your anger control you when you're not close to God. It's amazing how friendships can be broken up. It's amazing how Christians and churches can divide. And who, like, listen, once they were great friends, they were in it together, You loved your parents, but somewhere along the way, you got away from God. And as a result of getting away from God, he wasn't priority in your life. Something else took that place. And all of a sudden, anger starts to control you. Those relationships get broken. You hold it in and it causes this destructive thought process which shows up on the outside of you. Guys, you know what to do with your anger by being close to Jesus. I can't stress this enough. You can go read the book by Gary Chapman. He gives you some very practical tools. You can can watch Dr. Phil and get 10 steps to deal with your anger. You can walk outside and you can count to a million to try to calm down. But I'm here to tell you, if you're not close to God, If you don't know Jesus, you are not going to know what to do with your anger. You're going to lose it. It's going to cause problems. It's going to be crazy. This weekend, I believe there's people here that don't know Jesus. Simply put, you don't know Jesus. I know there's people here that struggle with anger, man. There's people that, man, it's got a hold of you. And for many of you guys, the reason it's got a hold of you is because you don't know Jesus. Close to God, you can't be close to God because you don't even know God. You, you, haven't, you haven't been made right in His sight. God's angry with you because of your sin. You haven't accepted Jesus and let His blood cover you. 
and accepted the fact that he died for you. He became a curse for you so that you could be made right in God's eyes. If that's you this weekend, no heads bowed, no eyes closed, just say this. You can say it out loud. In fact, let's all say it together. Let's all say this together. Because this moment is not about emotion. It's not about, let's try to give people ears to hear this and help them. Because at Revolution Church, we love helping people start a relationship with Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, say this prayer from your heart. If you do know Jesus, say this prayer again. Everybody say this with me. Say, Lord, I'm broken. I know I'm in need of a Savior. Don't tap out on me, y'all. Say it loud. Top it in online if you're watching. My anger controls me. I don't know what to do with it. I don't know what to do in my life. I'm broken. I'm hurting. I need Jesus right now in my life. Say it loud, y'all. Jesus, if you would, would you save me? I give my anger to you. I give my frustration to you. I want to be close to you. I want to do what you want me to do. Lord, I pray for your people today. I pray for them in Jesus' name. God, this is a serious series. There are people under the sound of my voice whose marriages are a wreck because people are not close to you and their anger has control of them. There are relationships represented in this place right now that are a wreck because people haven't sought you in that relationship. They're not close to you, and as a result, anger has ruled the day. There are people in here that are spewers that feel like they just need to say whatever they want anytime they want and don't even realize what a fool they sound like and how they're pushing so many people away. They are a shotgun blast that is hurting so many people. At the same time, God, there's people in here that that stew on every single thing. There are men under the sound of my voice that when it starts up, they go straight to bed, they wake up the next day, and it's a drop in the bucket. It's another 45-pound plate added onto the bar. And there's years, there's months, there's, there's so many drops in the bucket that they can't even carry it anymore. There's people under the sound of my voice, God, that are going to be dealing with people this month as a result of the holidays. That in their heart, if they're being honest, they hate them. They want to hurt them. God, I pray you do what only you can do. There's nothing I can say. Your Holy Spirit and your word has to come in and massage our hearts, change us in this area. We love you, Lord. You're awesome and you're mighty. All God's people said, amen. We are so glad that you've joined us online today and checked out Revolution Church. You can find us on Facebook, and actually go like our page if you want to keep up with the church. Or you can join our text club, text Rev Church to 62582. If you have questions, if you'd like to talk to someone, if you have prayer requests, just email us at office at crossvillerevolution.com or you can call our church at 931-248-6441. Thank you so much.